isn't it? You know, we try not to be at the human the uh, drama here, the physical, the third dimension. We try not to say it's my way or the highway, because people are going to turn around and they're going to walk off. I mean, I mean you're going to be a leader and you're going to look around, nobody's going to be behind you. But when it comes to spirit, it's my way or the highway. And what that means is that these strings that it's pulling is always the same, it doesn't change. And doggone it, it exists all the time. Love, harmony, and abundance. Would you agree with this? If you do, let's clap for spirit, not for me. <laughs> God, I go through this. And... <laughs> what's kind of neat about all this is that we're one with it, but what's the idea of all this is we are able to direct it. Gosh, I mean, we're able to direct this. We're the CEO of our own experience. We can direct how we want to uh, process this human experience. We, when, we, we, we have the opportunity to say, I want to suffer the whole darn time. We can do anything we want to do. But it's still pulling the strings in many ways. It's saying, okay, it's my way or the highway. If you want to have an enhanced human life, then you've got to follow what I tell you. And that's love, harmony, wholeness, and abundance. That's what you are. And as you go out there and, and that person looks you in the eye and says, I hate your guts, Bazell, you say, love, harmony, wholeness, and abundance. It doesn't affect me whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever done that to me, but I think. <laughs> we see these miracles that I don't like to use. In spirituality, I do not like the word miracles. One day, Carol, Carol I just resented, regretted it after I said this. I said, I don't believe in miracles, and Carol McCauley threw it at me and hit me on it for the last three next three years. <laughs> so I no, no longer say there are no miracles, but I'm going to explain myself to you today. That um, when we look at the physical dimension, yes, miracles exist because it implies unusual, just out of the box, really something special. And, and, and I had a word here and I can't even find it. I don't want to find it. And I, extraordinary. At the physical level, yeah. There are some extraordinary things going, and so we call them miracles. At the spiritual level, what is, what is a miracle, really? It's business as usual. It is not an extraordinary <laughs> thing. It is not unusual. It's business as usual. That's what it's all about. And uh, here at the uh, PLC, oh, years ago, and I try not to repeat stories, at least if you can remember them. <laughs> <laughs> and I date all my stories, so. Oh, I haven't said that. I haven't used that for the last 15 years. I can use it. <laughs> but uh, here at the PLC, I'm going to repeat a, a story, because we all heard it. And it, it, it exemplifies what we're talking about, this loving energy that provides miracles which is business as used in our lives. And we sat up here, I gave the talk that day, and the Fresno Bee uh, issued this story in the Fresno Bee. It was oh, maybe five, ten years, I don't know how many years ago. And it was about five kids. Some of you may remember this. Here's these five kids uh, from the ages of eight to 13 <laughs> playing out in their front yard. And by the way, this happened. They showed this on the fifth page, if you can believe this. But anyway, um, here's these kids, 8 to 13, playing in the front yard, and they hear a scream next door. And they run next door, and here's this guy working under the car, and one of the blocks slipped and pinned him under the car. And these kids, who weighed probably no more than combined weight of 500 pounds, they went over there, and they picked up the top of the car. Picked it up. Over 3,000 pounds. Picked it up so this guy could pull himself out from under. Now, don't tell me that, that this doesn't exist. I don't know. I can, if you're an atheist out there in the field, it's fine. But just read this, the stories that appear in the newspaper. I was reading the Newsweeks one day, and here's another. And you know, that, that story was so amazing and so wonderful, and it, and it wasn't on the front page. It wasn't on the front page. Murder, rape, and whatever. Yeah. It wasn't on maybe the fifth page you had to look for. it. It's crazy. The other thing, I was reading newspaper, uh, the Newsweek one day, it was the same year that this happened, and here's about this mom. She drives up into her driveway, and she's got her arms, remind me of Stella, she's always got her arms full of groceries. <laughs> but anyway, she parked the car up uh, on her driveway, and she's carrying the, 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 it into her, into her house, and she looks back, and her car's rolling backwards, and her little three-year-old's on a tricycle, for goodness sakes. She dropped everything, and at lightning speed, she has no idea how she got there so fast. She got that vehicle, she stopped it, and what did she do? She pushed it all the way up the driveway. Tell me there are no unusual uh, 
the things happening in the, in the physical world. So this is an awesome month. And, um, and, and what it says is when we awaken, and this whole thing, this whole idea this month is let's awaken our awareness that we're magnificent beings. And, it, it, that, and, and the bottom line is its existence is, is obvious. I mean, all you have to do is look around. It, it's there and it's, it's obvious. So anyway, I don't mean to get too emotional. <laughs> <laughs> but when we awaken to that which we are, then we create the awareness that we call unity consciousness. Phew, I did it. All right, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> A few years ago, a few years ago, we were at the Anton Conference in Palm Springs, you know, it's the Affiliated New Thought Network, they maybe take the sign down, I don't know, the Affiliated, it's our association. Uh, anyway, the Affiliated New, we were at this Palm Springs uh, conference, and we invited a gal named Ra, uh, Reverend uh, Barbara Ger Gerard, Reverend Barbara Gerard, yeah, they did, they made me take the sign down. I've got it upstairs, I can prove it. But anyway, <laughs> no, I accepted that. I, th I thought it was important to do that and put the rug up instead. But anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. I just love our assertive uh, pastors. And, <laughs> and you got to roll with it, and it teaches me, you know, I can detach from it. <laughs> but anyway, here's this uh, Reverend Bar uh, Beverly Gard and Gerard. And she wanted to tell a story. Well, she's telling the story, and I'm sitting there in the audience. There's about 120 of us there. She's telling the story. And the story itself was illogical, unreasonable, and for many, I think, in the, in the, in the audience, uh, a fantasy. But she told it, and I listened. And the reason I listened to it, because she was actually showing the power through an actual experience the power of unity consciousness. And she talked about, and she, and I might read some stuff, I don't know if I will or not, but I'll see how the Spirit tells me to do. She was talking about a, a person by the name of Dr. Bissell. Now, Dr. Bissell spent his life, he was a scholar, and he spent his life researching and studying the ancient teachings of the Essenes. How many of you know about the Essenes? And I always say that Jesus was an Essene, but I don't know if anybody agrees with that. Um, but anyway, uh, he, was, he studied this ancient teachings of the Essenes and the Dead Sea Scrolls. And he was also teaching the, the, the principles that were, was outlined by Jesus as Jesus brought forth these ancient teachings. And Dr. Bissell, and I've got to admit this, the story went, if you're on the street and you're just coming in and you're listening to this, it was illogical, unreasonable, and it could be considered a fantasy. But she said, you know, I have worked with Dr. Gerard been with him side by side for over eight years. And I know this to be fact. Dr. Gerard, Dr. Bissell, Dr. Bissell was diagnosed as having a severed spine. There's a gap in his spine. And Dr. Bissell should have been handicapped. He should have been paralyzed from the waist down. Instead, he walked. He jogged, and he did exercise as if nothing had occurred to him at all. And she said, this is a fact, and this is what I've seen. And so Dr. Bissell's story, and I've got some of it, and here's what his thesis was, and here's what he agreed to. We can develop within our being a certain receptivity through which we are able to absorb the currents of cosmic forces flowing in and around us. How many of you agree with that? Can we absorb that? Yes, we can. That's what we're all about. That's new thought. And consciously utilize them as sources of energy, harmonizing, knowledging, and well-beingness. This ancient teaching, he goes on, tells us that the body can be open to the universal storehouse of cosmic forces. And its purpose, a universal purpose, is that it's a way that we can put the organs of the physical body in harmony with the cosmic flow. You know, I mean, if we can open our minds and say, is this true? You know, are there these cosmic forces that are out there, energy levels that can come? And we can show that. We've had several contemporary writers, including Deepak Chopra, show us that it's absolutely true that we're an energy force and that we're dealing with an energy, a vibration. 
What he said was that through this teaching he was able, and here's the key, that may have been kind of foo-foo to a lot of people in the audience, but he said through this teaching he was able to focus the cosmic flow, the divine energy, the divine light of God, so that it provided a continuous connection between both parts of his spine and the space within. Can we believe this? Yes. We listened to this in stunned silence, and I totally accepted it, because the fact is that if we believe that Jesus did exist, that he was a master healer and a master teacher, and that he said that what I do, you can do it even better, then if that's true, why is not that not possible? Got the idea? Why is it not possible we could do that? If only we could believe. That's what this month is about. If only we can believe. If we can believe, we can achieve. If only we can believe and develop this consciousness, this awareness of the unity, of the oneness that we have with all there is. Um, now, I, this awareness of, that we call the unity consciousness was pretty much defined uh, in 380 BC by Plato, the great uh, uh, philosopher, the Greek, uh, actually Roman philosopher. And what he said, and I quote, and Plato said this, I see a more extraordinary being within myself than the one that I met myself to be. He was saying, there's something pretty extraordinary about me. And here's the thing that's going to make uh, Maggie just roll over. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's where you got your idea. I found out. Perhaps I'm a plaything in the hands of God, a toy in which he, he, he creates delight. My gosh. Yes. <laughs> but then he said, nothing can be more wonderful than to play one's highest, highest part. And our highest part is our highest potential. So let's ask Angelo a question. OK? Ready to ask Angelo a question? Mm -hmm. Angelo. <laughs> I just put personality. <laughs> Angelo, if all this is true, if all this is not foo foo, then why is the world so messed up? Ever have people ask you that question when you're trying to define what New Thought's all about? Yeah, I get that a lot. And uh, it's choice, my dear Sherlock, my dear Watson. It's choice. <laughs> is it, uh, we can answer that, is it possible that Plato may be right? That he was a plaything in the hands of God, a toy in which God has delight. Who knows? Who cares, really? One thing is certain, and this is really certain. We have the opportunity, we have the right to choose how we expect this world, how we want to perceive it, and how we let, want to live it. We have, we have the right to experience it as we decide. And that's what we do know. Not only that, that we have the power to direct this powerful energy force ourselves as we so desire. That's our power. William James, the great psychologist, told us back, it was on the end of, oh, the last part of the 1800s, that, uh, and, and we asked the question, well, why is the world such a mess? Well, we'll tell you in a few minutes here. You're going to get the answer from here from the podium. Because I was going to explain to you the entire situation. Why are we in such a mess? He said that most people live whether, whether intellectually, physically, or morally in a very limited circle of their true potential. People just don't know. And so what do they do? And I pazellalize this whole thing. Uh, uh, number one, that our true potential is not only unused and untapped, but it's undiscovered. Most people don't understand the stuff that we teach here at the PLC. So they don't have any idea how to enhance their lives by connecting to the spirit. Uh, the bottom line is that many of us, and most people, why the, the, the world is such, in such a mess, is that we get absorbed by what's happening to us. We get absorbed by the human dynamics. We de get absorbed by our own creations. You know, when we experience something, it's always somebody else's fault. Or we experience something, and what do we do? We wallow in it. We talk to mom about it. We call home. 